We're going to do the head. And we have lots of options here for choosing a style for the pet Shih Tzu head. Um, I think uh, we just saw one with short ears. Um, so we'll do this one with long ears because we have that option. Um, this is a boy, so I think that I would choose to do um, a straight ear versus a rounded ear to give him a little bit more masculine look. Um, and then I'm going to do his head with snap-on combs uh, to give him sort of a smaller Asian style look um, on his head itself. Uh, and I might leave him a little bit of a beard to start and then we can all look at it and decide if we think we should leave that or maybe we could take it a little bit more off. Uh, once you go away from breed, st breed standard grooming, uh, which a Shih Tzu would be parted and all to the floor, you can choose whatever you want because you've gone away from your breed standard, so now you can, the sky's the limit. You can do, so at every turn you have choices with what you're gonna do with the legs, the neck, the tail, the head, which we are gonna do his tail today too, through this. So by setting um, your head in with snap-on combs, you can determine specific lengths. And what I think is really nice about that is that if you have a salon with many groomers and you keep notes of what you did, then you can get a similar look each time the dog comes in versus each groomer has a little bit different style, which is still gonna come through, but maybe a little bit less if you've, cut, if you've um, blocked everything in with snap-on combs and made your knit notations of your lengths. So I'm using the Andis um, Five Speed Excel with an Ultra Edge 10 blade with the A chrome comb over top. This is a plastic comb with chrome paint. And so if I set in the top of his head with this and then just lightly scissor it, then the next time the dog comes in, the next groomer that does it, he'll get a similar length to the top of his head and a similar look. And then on the sides, I'm gonna change over to a two comb to get him down on the sides. Now these chrome combs attach just a little bit differently um, than others. You actually put the teeth over first and then they snap on. So I'm gonna take this coat off in front of his ears here. Start to get him down. Some of the characteristics of the uh, more Asian style trims are that the head is very small, the eyes are very accentuated, and the ears are very, they're, fo they're a focal point of the head. So we want to really accentuate the eyes and the ears. And I'm going to go up onto the sides a little bit with that two comb. And over the top of the ear right here, because by setting that in around the top of the ear, there's a little bit of a snag there in his hair, that's going to make his ear pop. So already his ear is more prominent. See how I kind of carved that in? So I carved the cheek out underneath and underneath the ear. Get that nice and short. And we have sort of the foundation of like a very prominent ear. Now we'll work on getting the eyes to be more prominent. Use a little bit of spray for static. So we all have a tendency to um, trim the bangs uh, when we are learning, especially. Um, one of our first steps when we do bangs is we'll take our scissor and we'll cut straight across the front. That's actually the last step that I would choose to do in my process. Do you have a little problem with that? It's okay, it's all right. So I'm gonna go in underneath. Easy, sweetie, it's all right. And I'm gonna come around to the corner of the eye on this side and to the corner of the eye. Easy does it, sweetie. Okay. On this side. So basically, it's like, I always explain it to students like I'm drawing the curtains around the outside of their eye and it really frames the eye. And he has, and you can see his eye from the side view, so he has good peripheral vision and it just kind of opens up the whole thing. But you notice I didn't trim the bangs. 
So there's a couple of reasons I choose not to do that. One is because it gives them sort of a surprised expression, like they look shocked all the time and amazed. And um, if I leave a little bit of bangs, they will be back sooner. So I like for my customers to come in regularly, and then when they come in and trim the, trim the bang short, trim the bang short all the time, they're getting a longer groom out of you. <laughs> so, I, so I like to try and leave a little bit. I know my touchy clients. I know the ones that I can push it a little bit with and maybe not so much with others. But you see how bringing it in on the, on the side and leaving it, and if you look at it from the top, you can see that it's kind of a U shape. So it gives it just a little bit more expression but he can still see very clearly because I went underneath and took the lashes out and took everything out from underneath. So then we can decide together how we should style his ears and beard. I personally think that he would look cute with like his ears really bluntly trimmed and his beard really bluntly trimmed. I think that would give him a very masculine look. Maybe somebody wouldn't always assume he's a girl, but typically they do always assume they're girls, right? So let's see if we can give him a very blunt beard line now. Even though I am gonna trim his beard bluntly and leave it a little bit longer, it's very short underneath here. So that's gonna reduce the amount of matting, the amount of coat um, that the dog has. Are you gonna go somewhere? Do you have somewhere to be? So I'm gonna take just a flat straight shear Take that off flat to give him a very, very masculine beard. And if I were to round that, it would automatically feminize it a little bit with just a little bit of rounding. It doesn't take much. It's amazing the difference between masculine and feminine in terms of just a few strokes with your scissors and you can change everything. So now he has a nice little flat beard. and. When we're choosing, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay, you don't need to be upset. When you're choosing the um, length of the ear, you could either keep it exactly in line with the beard length. <laughs> what, what? It's okay. So, but his ear leather itself is pretty, um, pretty short. So we could literally take his ear this short, but I don't think that that would frame his face very well. I think if we keep it just under this longest part of his beard, it's gonna frame his face the best. It's okay, it's all right. And I wanna do it straight across. And I would work with him to grow this out to be all one length. And I think that would give it a nice heart. I'd really frame it in at the top and then I'd have the hair all one length, bob it off, and that's gonna give you a really nice masculine look to that. Do the other side, it's okay. Turn your head for me. Good boy, thank you, good boy. So here's a trick for cutting two ears. I was just getting ready to try and guess <laughs> how long I left the other one. That's not actually the most effective way to do that. Um, it's a really nice idea, hold it, hold stand up for me, to, um, to look at them from the front. And sometimes you have to kind of push their face in a little bit, meaning I can pull it forward or push it back. That's what I mean by that. And I can look here, if he'll let me, and cut this one the same length as this one right across the front. And that's a nice way to measure those instead of doing this one from this side and then this one from this side. It's just a good time saver. And, you know, because we know that we can waste a lot of time trying to get two ears the same length. <laughs> I used to, as a competitor, always make sure that I didn't have to do much ear trimming in the ring because I could blow the last 15 minutes of the contest just trying to get my ears the same length. So, you know, and it's, we're trying to make money, so we want to do the most efficient thing we can. Thanks. I've been throwing things all morning. I don't know. So now I'm just gonna kinda blend it a little and this will soften it some. And this is our Andis thinning shear. I really like it. It takes a lot of coat. So it's, it's almost as much as a regular shear. Like it has so many teeth and they're so close together that it takes a lot of coat each, with each one. 
come up here under here and make sure this line is clean. It's okay, sweetheart. And then I'm gonna work on his tail a little bit too. It's a good boy. I think he's gonna prefer that. <laughs> he's gonna prefer that. So now I'm going over this tail. And I really enjoy doing um, a Portuguese water dog style tail on these little pets. It cleans them up so nicely. Um, it keeps everything back here clean. It's very neat looking. I'm gonna even clean this up a little bit more so that we don't have these pieces back here. Um, and I use the number two blade to do that on him. Um, and I just think that it just, so oftentimes it cleans that up. If you are gonna leave your tail furnishing on there though, um, you always wanna, as a last um, uh, detail to your groom, pull it up over the back. Um, if they carry their tail over their back and give it a couple shakes and anything that falls backwards, go ahead and take that off because they're just gonna go home and have this. And you really want it to all be, you know, going in a forward motion. So, um, so if I'm not gonna do a Portuguese water type tail, um, then I like to make sure at least I clean the back of the tail up. And then I'm gonna just take my Anda thinners here and my comb that I can't keep a hold of. And- um, How far down would you clip her from the Portuguese tail? Uh, that's a good question. She asks how far to go with the clippering. Um, for a true Portuguese water dog, you wanna clip to the ileums. So you would put the tail up over the back in an arc actually, not laying flat, but arced over the back. And you would clip it to the ileums. Um, for this dog, since it's not a Portuguese water dog, I didn't go quite that far. Um, and I think I would actually, if I had to do it over again, maybe come off a little bit earlier even to leave this part of the plume coming off. So um, I think you can choose. Again, once you go away from the breed standard, you can, you have, the sky is the limit. I've seen some pretty amazing grooms. <laughs> it, either customer requests or, um, or just things that I've had to do to accommodate a dog or just new styles. I'm loving some of the new styles right now. I think it's important for us to stay creative in the salon and just keep trying new things and doing new styles. So this thinner is gonna be a really nice way to come up the back of the tail here and clean that up. I could have used a shorter blade. I could have used a seven or a four depending on the dog. Certainly if it's a dark colored dog, I can take it shorter and not show, you know, the pink. Um, white, I would go a little bit longer. You know, these are all things that we're deciding all day long as we're working is, you know, at every part, we're deciding what's gonna fit the best. So you can see that he had some pretty, uh, you know, owner styling. He had some owner styling going on when we got a hold of him. Uh, that's, you know, what we see all day long every day in the salon. And so, could I get a slicker brush? Um, so, we just had to kind of even up what we have here to work with. And one thing that I find to be very helpful is to just make sure that you're making parallel lines on the back of the dog. Don't think of it in terms of evening everything up to the shortest pieces but rather make a parallel line and if there's little divots and holes in your parallel line, it's still gonna create the illusion that the leg is what's there. It's, it's a really uh, bad habit for us to try and scissor everything till it's smooth and then there's no hair left, but it's really smooth, but we've scissored it all the way. So, you...
Diane is amazing at keeping her clippers oiled. She oils her blades religiously. She's very good at that. And the life of your motor. If you oil your blades and you keep those two pieces of metal that are rubbing back and forth on each other slick, your motor lasts way longer because you're not trying to rub two dry metals together. So it makes a huge difference. Good boy, you're doing a great job. Yes. I'm gonna get up here on this front leg here now and just do the same. So I made two parallel lines back here, inside and out, and then I'll come around to the front of the dog and I'll make two parallel lines inside and out. And so I, I prefer to groom the dog um, doing two parallel lines on the outside and then the inside and then go around to the front and do two parallel lines on the outside and then the inside versus grooming the dog leg by leg, which at the end of a leg by leg groom can be somewhat disjointed and not really flowing. But if you do it in this technique, you tend to have a more well put together uh, groom at the end. So just a parallel line here, straight down, outside and inside. And then we're missing a whole bunch of hair right there that the owner kindly cut away for us. Apparently he uh, was getting snowballs from where he lives and so they were cutting, and I don't blame them, but so what do we do there? Do we, do we blend to that point? Because if we did, we might as well take the leg down with a four number four. So I wouldn't, I would kind of leave it and let it go and try and neaten it up some and um, tell the owner I did the best that I could with, with their help. <laughs> and you know, thank you and we'll see you next month. <laughs> we see some pretty creative things. So that's a little bit better. I took it a little bit shorter above that hole and that fixed it a little bit. But I still wouldn't go in and take the whole leg down just because there's a hole there. Now I'll comb it down. I don't know if you guys were seeing that I was basically combing the legs up to, to <laughs> he doesn't like that spray, <laughs> so. Now combing it down will give us the final neatening process. <laughs> All right, I think our time is up here. So, but hopefully you learned a couple of good tips on the head and with some ideas on how to manage that. And, um, you know, you might initially, when you do the visor, what we call a visor here, have some customers who come back who have helped you out a little bit and taken some of those bangs off, but they do enjoy it after they get used to it. And they get, they sort of get accustomed to that better expression. And, um, and they do enjoy that, so. All right.